Okay, so yesterday I did all my length cuts uh, accurately. These are all my door uh, vertical rails. And I use these story sticks here. This one here is for the long cabinet, the six feet and four and a quarter. <clears throat> these little dotted lines here denote the mortises for the mortise and tenons. That from that dotted line to this one, that gives me the length of this lower style uh, for the doors. Anyhow, I did that. These are here are scraps right here, but these are my uh, horizontal parts. Thing is, yesterday, <clears throat> I'm not perfect, right? I can't even believe I did this. But my very first cut on my longest parts, I cut the first one short. <laughs> and I've been taking my time and going slow with this whole project in an effort to make the least amount of mistakes possible. You always make little mistakes, and usually it's not that big of a deal. Um, as I said before, there's no such thing as a wood stretcher. So, um, and I don't have enough length here to do a, like a kooky joint. Like normally I do a half lap joint, maybe try a 45, maybe do a tongue and groove, because you want surface area of glue here. Um, but what I'm going to do, that's the exact part there, you see how the grain, lines up. It's actually going to be a pretty tight joint. I took a piece of scrap here, a couple pieces, and I used my biscuit joiner, which I have not used in forever. I used to use the biscuit joiner all the time when I was gluing up lengths of boards to make tabletops, but after a while I started experimenting with no biscuits whatsoever and just using the uh, Type On 2 wood glue. I haven't had any problems since. Uh, white Bond, uh, the, the uh, tight bond too is stronger than the wood itself the wood will break before the glue joint breaks and the biscuits were always they would come in handy for aligning the boards correct right like in case you got some wonkiness but I put so much time in the milling all my lumber to be perfectly flat perfect 90 degrees all the way around um, I just lay my boards up on a couple rails they all line up perfect I don't really need the biscuits so uh, but it does come in handy it's gonna come in handy now so I'll try to show you this uh, real quick here so this here is a biscuit it is pressed beech wood I believe and when exposed to moisture it swells so the idea here is you, you stick this in here Let's put this piece in and that's going to make a pretty nice tight permanent joint now of course i, I wouldn't trust this if, if it was just going to be this and it had a you know up hold up to some sort of strength or something the beauty of making the mistake on this piece is uh, let's see here this piece happens to be a corner piece so what that means is, is right now this is two and a half inches i've got this piece here which i just a scrap of this uh which is milled to the right thickness so that when it goes right up along here i get a corner this is going to be an outside corner piece so with the biscuit in here and then uh, this piece glued and nailed to it right from the other side this will be super strong. I won't have to. This is not going to be a problem. You know, the other side would be the front. This is the side panel. There's going to be a mortise in here for a mortise and tenon, where there's going to be a nice wide uh, panel. Or not, there's going to be a panel here. There's going to be a nice wide board here that comes up and a panel in here. So everything's going to be structurally plenty, plenty strong. But this is just me showing you. A, I'm not perfect. I, mean, I do, do make mistakes. And there's nothing wrong with admitting it. I'm just trying to come up with a quick solution. So I'm going to do this now, and then I'm going to go get some food, eat some lunch, and come back, and then glue this and nail this piece on, and do my mortise and tendon with this as one piece here. Uh, it will be if, if this is the orientation. It's actually not. This is the front side. But uh, when I do it, let's just say, for instance, this is the back, and my side panel is here. The hinges for the doors will mount on this edge here. So yeah that's uh that's what i got to do right now i don't know how the sound is the mic's all over the place 
Anyhow, those things just happen sometimes, right? And it's nice, you know, you save your scraps. Try not to throw too much out before the project is done because as the project goes on, uh, you might need this for something. Even when it comes time to lay my panels out and prime and paint them, I can put a couple blocks down on the four corners, do all my work, keep it up off the table, makes things cleaner. Uh, you know, you hold on to this till you're ready to install the project and then you know this is garbage i could also make cleats out of these there's a lot of stuff going on for instance i'll just show you this real quick put you down over here for a moment uh, i'm gonna have to come up with a system here probably because i'm going to be using most likely i'm using a european uh, hinge so a european hinge needs a little bit more room right here for uh, bolting so I might take these blocks and trim them down and place them right on here or maybe I'll even attach them this way just like that uh, I don't know I haven't made a determination yet but typically you'll bolt your hinge here and there'll be a cup that goes on the back side of the door the doors the door rails are all the same thickness wood it's all an inch thick so the door will lay in here and swing out so you'd have a hole here for the 35 millimeter recessed cup on the hinge. You need a place to mount that. You need a place to mount that hinge. So we need something here. So again, these, uh, these scrap blocks may be what I need. Maybe I'll rip them down and that'll be thick enough. I'll, I'll, I'll know when I get the hinges. I might have to orient it this way. Maybe I'll do some kooky shape to it. Uh, you know, but either way, I'll figure that out. I'll do, I can make a measurement here. I know that's a half inch, right? So I can uh, mill something up to fit tight to here. There's a, I can come up with a half a dozen different ways to do it right now. It's unimportant at the moment. I'll get to that when I come to it, right? I'll solve that when I get to it. Something like that. <laughs> Anyhow, no such thing as a wood stretcher, but you can be creative. And that'll work. And when it's done, you won't see it. And it'll be interesting, it will be this piece right here. It's this corner. So this door is hinged off of it. So when I install it, <clears throat> I don't know if it'll be the top end or the bottom end, but when I install it, you know, it'll be sanded, primed, painted. I don't think you're gonna see anything, but if you do, you do. And uh, you guys can tell me, but I think, I think, I think it's gonna be invisible. <laughs> Anyhow, it's just one of those things. I'll catch you guys next time. Have a good day. I don't know what you'd call this video, but uh, no such thing as a wood stretcher, but dot, dot, dot. All right, so here's what I came up with. The level is clamped to the piece with this clamp here. It's also clamped here. That gives me the straightness that I need. This block of wood is holding, uh, or this clamp rather, is holding this block of wood down. It's holding the long piece to the bench. Also gives me a place to put this long heavy duty clamp on to the end of the board, which pulls this piece into that piece. I let this hang off the end of the table here. Right? so that I can adjust this this way and I know that the level you can see the reveal here to the top of the level it matches what's going on here so that should be pretty straight now if this is off pitch a little bit it won't matter too much because uh, when I put that skinny piece on that I just showed you it makes up the corner it'll make all that perfectly straight now this is end grain. End grain does not take glue, you know, typically it wouldn't hold. That's one of the reasons why I put the biscuit in there. If this is an issue here, I will fill this, you know, sand it, do all the things I need to do with it um, when that time comes. But I suspect, as I mentioned a moment ago, that this will be pretty invisible when it's all primed out and painted. I got this little edge here I can fill if I need to, that little hole, uh, possibly one on the other side. 
Uh, my only issue is any squeeze out that might have gotten on the table. It might make that stick a little bit, but it's not enough glue for it to be permanently bonded. A little slight tap with a block of wood and maybe a hammer to persuade it. It'll snap right off the table, no problem. And that should uh, take care of that. Just think it out, you know. Just got to think it out. It's going to work. It'll be fine. I just, it's, it was the very first cut of the day. I can't even believe it. I measured a couple times and I don't know why I just had the wrong thing in my head. You're constantly going back and forth to your map and all your cut list, your lengths. And um, yeah, so I'll be cutting my tenons on the table saw with a jig that you'll see. I'll probably show it to you. <clears throat> but I think today, after I'm done with that, when I come back this afternoon, I'll be setting this up. This is my hollow chisel mortiser. I love this machine. It makes square holes. It effectively works like a drill press. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a square hollow square chisel with a drill bit basically in the center. And you can do all your adjustments and then you get that set right, and then as progressively as you start making all of your uh, your mortises, they're all going to be the same then. It's one of my favorite machines. I, I, I'm only using this when I'm building furniture, and I haven't been building a lot of furniture lately. But boy, it's a major, major time saver. And it, it affords you the ability to make a, a mortise and tenon joint relatively efficiently. In the old days, you would have to, and I've done it the old fashioned way with drilling in and squaring it up with a chisel. And this is just it's a huge, it, uh, you want me to do that again? But it affords, it just saves so much time and it's way more precise. It was worth buying it back when I bought it. I don't even know how long ago. I've probably had that machine I have no idea. I'm pretty certain I bought it before the year 2000. Well, let's just say two, two, 20 years anyhow. I've had it at least 20 years. So, uh, yeah. Think a joiner planer. And, uh, yeah, I'll tell you, I do a lot with the chop saw. Of course, it's a small shop. Every time I bump that with my hip, when I'm trying to move around things, I've got to realign it, do a cut, check it for square. That's kind of annoying. Uh, this three horsepower Laguna table saw has been pretty good. Of course, the three horsepower uh, Laguna 18 inch bandsaw has been fantastic. I had an S45 Mini Max that just had like a three quarter horsepower motor on it. It was constantly bogging down on me. And with those machines <clears throat> in this little space, I'm able to turn out some pretty high quality product. Um, it's a poor craftsman that blames his tools. I often thought that if I was driving the van around and I had a trailer, I, I would want a trailer tall enough to keep that thing standing upright, you know? Because if I can resaw and plane and have a table saw, I'm in great shape. You could have you could literally be traveling around with a small trailer with the machines in it that you need. You don't need the big table saw. I can make a smaller one. And basically, if you have a generator or access to power, you could set up a, a pro shop on the side of the road anywhere and turn out really nice quality pieces. So it's been a fantasy of mine. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, I got to get to work, right? I just thought I, I was going to just do that one first part of the video and leave it at that. But once I did this, I thought, well, this is pretty interesting to look at. I, I suppose people might be interested in seeing that and I had no plan on this I just got here this morning and started working on it and figured out this should work uh, also dry time on this typically uh, if you're using the um, type on two wood glue I've been using this for years I think it's the best there is no foam out like that gorilla glue stuff and I've never had I've, all my cutting boards are with this and I haven't had a cutting board fall apart yet as far as I know so uh, great product 20 minutes in 20 minutes you could typically pick your parts up and you and do something with them run them through the saw whatever I'll let this go longer because the end grain 
it's it's not it's not the best the biscuits gonna do a lot there okay I'm leaving you alone now I gotta get back to work I'm done have a good day now I'll catch you in the next one <laughs>